In this tutorial, we're going to create the vectors that you can see on screen. This tutorial relies heavily on constructing guides that we can then snap to using the draw polyline tool. We also then do a lot of node editing, so transforming polyline spans into Bezier spans, and also turning just normal node points into smooth points, and then editing all those to create nice tangential flowing curves by aligning these control points to either the Y or the X axis. So let's start by opening a new copy of the software and click to create a new file. And for this job we're going to specify a width of 11 inches and a height of 7 inches. We're going to set the Z0 to the top of the block and we're going to set a thickness of three quarters of an inch. We're also going to specify the XY datum position to be in the center and we're going to keep the units in inches and when we've done that we can press OK to proceed. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the image that we're going to want to trace around. So if we come to import bitmap for tracing and then select our US underscore buckle dot jpg and then click open. This will now import the image into our job. Now it's come in pre-selected. If we just click it again with our mouse it will now take the image into transform mode. Now while it's in this position we can hold the left mouse button down and then drag the image around our work area. We can also use the anchor points on all the corners to resize the image. If we hold down shift we can also so resize what we're it going to do to start point. with is we're going to like so. first of all align the object so just make sure it's selected with the pink outline and then come over to transform objects and align selected objects. We're going to use this icon to center in the very center of our work area and when we've done that click close. Next we're going to resize the image so making sure it's still selected come over to set selected object size we want to have the anchor point in the center and make sure that link XY is ticked so that any width that we specify it keeps in proportion with Y so if we just put 10 inches in there and then click apply and then close for this example we'd like to create smooth vector outlines to go around the oval shape of the buckle and the letters U and S that are within. It'd be nice if we could use the trace bitmap tool. However, this is rarely suited to imported images as blocks of colour tend to merge in with one another and it'd be hard to pick out a suitable colour which would go around perfectly the edge of our letters and buckle. It is more suited to artwork that's created manually on design software where solid blocks of colour have been used. To demonstrate this, we'll try and do it now by using the trace bitmap tool. We can first of all manually edit the bitmap shading so we can see more or less of the colour that we can actually pick out in the bitmap. We can obviously choose to use colour or black and white but being uh, a colour image it's better to use the colour option. And then we can start selecting the different colours and as you can see the more colours that you choose the more it gets built up and as you can see already we're not getting a solid outline around our letters nor are we getting a solid outline around our buckle and if we were to go ahead and create the preview from what we can see from let's say a more suitable set of colors as you can see there's going to be a lot of vectors which are unusable for this example. So this example, we're not going to use going to be heavily the trace bitmap tool on using this, guides so we can just and node editing that. to create our vectors that are around the letters U and S. Firstly though we'll start with something simple and we'll start by drawing the ellipse for the outline of our buckle. So simply come over to create vectors and select the draw ellipse tool and we can hover around and find the 
x0, y0 and just roughly try to create our ellipse. doesn't have to be perfect though because we are going to manually enter the width as 9.8 inches and the height as 5.9 inches and click apply and then close as you can see at the moment it is quite hard to work out where the vectors are the actual colors of the image so what we can do is we can select the image back in respect to right click it and then go to object properties This will help us when building our and we can select the brightness of the image also, when it's not so selected. That's better. So if I just select that and then click close. So the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be constructing our guides. And we're going to be using the guides to snap to when it comes to drawing around our letters with the draw polyline tool. So what we need to do is we need to grab a guide, come to the rulers and drag one out with the left mouse button whilst holding the left mouse button down and we can drag these from left to right or if it was a if it was a horizontal guide from top to bottom and what we want to do is we want to align these with any horizontal or vertical edges of our letters now sometimes we may not be able to like this one here get close enough to where we want to be so that's where we can hold shift and the increments that we're moving are a lot smaller and more precise so we can get in exactly where we want to so I'm going to do this by holding shift for all of mine so for more accuracy and you may want to just watch me do this for now and then after I've done that you can then pause the video and then go ahead and copy exactly what I've done but all I'm doing is simply dragging out these vertical guys and just matching them to all the vertical points that I can see on the letters. For the S we do the same. We also want to do it to the edge of the curves as well. So this one's going to be matching just about here and then there's one quite close which is just the edge of this S, the bottom of the S vertical there. So we go along and do all the vertical edges that we can see including the corners. Almost missed one there. And when we've done with the vertical ones, we can then start on the horizontal ones. So again, just from the top, drag down, so it's going to drag down to the top of the letters here and the top of this point here and there And the last one, just at the bottom of all the letters there, like so. Now that we've created all our guides, we can start to use the Draw Polyline tool to snap to them. So simply come over to Create Vectors and select the Draw Polyline tool. What we're going to do is we're going to find a place to start. And then I'm going to start at the top left of our U. Now you'll notice that the cursor will change on the mouse pointer. If we're on a vertical uh, you'll see that there's a vertical line that goes through the center of our crosshair and if it's horizontal line or if there's an intersection like as, which is where we're going to be doing most of our points you'll see that it's a horizontal and a vertical line through the center. So to start simply just click down in the top left and then just drag over. You'll notice that it has now attached and just do it to our next snap point. So we're just going to go around into all the cr cross sections right here. When we come to uh, a corner, simply go down diagonally to the next one, like so. 
simply just do this all the way around. And you'll notice once we've gone all the way around, when it comes to joining our vector together, you'll see that it returns to this icon here. And just click that, and then that creates our fully closed vector. So now we'll start with the S. I'm going to start here, so I'm just going to click up. When it comes to our curves, just find, try and find, like I say, a center point of what would be a long arc. So I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to do another one there, and then come all the way down here. We obviously can add points in afterwards as well. So there. Obviously, you can just watch me while I do this, and then pause the video and copy exactly what I've done. again when we've uh, finished drawing around and we can complete our vector when we see the sign to click that click close to exit that and what we can do now uh, is we may want to remove the guides from visibility so to do that we just click in the square which joins the two rulers and you'll see that it will just hide them we can obviously get them back at any point by just clicking again there We've now got the basis of our letters, so what we're going to do now is we're going to use the node editing tool to add curves and smooth points to our vectors. We're going to concentrate on the U to start with, so what we can do is we can go to the 2D view controls and we can go to a zoom box. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to drag a focus area around the letter U, for instance. We can then exit that tool by pressing either escape on the keyboard or just coming over simply and selecting the normal selection mode arrow. So if we go into node editing mode we can do that by either pressing the letter N on the keyboard or simply by coming over to edit objects and selecting the node editing mouse pointer and simply select the vector and you'll notice that it comes up with all the points, these are all node points, and then spans. You'll know when we're hovering over a span because it'll have the little wiggly line underneath the mouse pointer. And what we want to do is we want to convert these spans, the ones that we want to add curves to, to Bezier spans. Now we do that by right clicking and then click to Bezier. Now what we can do also, if you notice, we can also press the letter B when we're hovering near a span. So if we just hover near this one and then press B on the keyboard, you'll notice that they've both now changed to Bezier spans. These spans offer two control points which allow you to affect the curve of the span. Now what we want to do is we want to make a tangential curve around there. So that means we have to align these with say the x-axis for the, any of the vertical points and any of the horizontal points we want to align with the y-axis. So to do that we simply select the point and then the control point and then press X. This one has already been done and then we'll start with this one and this one will be aligning with Y. Simply draw a box around one and then hold shift and then draw a box around the other to multiple select and then just hit Y on the keyboard for this particular one. Again, this one, this one will be aligning with X because it's a vertical point. So we'll be pressing X for this one. And just go around and complete the rest of these. So this one will be aligning with Y. And so will this one. 
and these last two will be aligning with X. So now we've done that, what we can do now is we can toggle the control points and then use the keyboard to jog them around. So we can select this one here and just jog that down and if we just move say this point and this point so just move that in a bit and this one in also then we can then stretch out that curve by simply just selecting that control point and then bringing it out like so and this same for this one and then we'll do this one next so I just want to bring that out a bit around there and just push that curve down a bit by accessing this control point I just want to bring that one in a bit it's starting to form the shape that we're after This control point, I believe, should be moved up just a touch, like so. And if we zoom out a little, we can see the U that we've got now. And if we're happy with that, we can simply move on to the S. Don't be scared, however, if you, once you've zoomed out and you've had a look, that you believe that maybe you could do some more changes, because the more work that you put into it now, the better that it's going to come out when you're actually running it on your machine. So this bit maybe looks like it may sit a little high so you can simply just drag them both and just shift them up a little bit so next we can exit the node editing mode by pressing escape so once we're zoomed in draw a zoom pre box simply press escape to exit the, the zoom box shape. mode and then press then on the keyboard to go into node editing and come over and simply select the vectors. Now what we're going to do this time is we're going to create not Bezier spans like we did on the U, we're going to come over and we're going to turn these points into smooth points. So we do that by hovering over the node and you'll notice that we're over the node when the cursor changes to that. And simply right click and press to smooth point. Now you may have noticed it does actually have the shortcut of S. So we can also hover over these points and then press S on the keyboard, like so. You can also, if you've got a, a few points like we have here that we all want to add smooth points to, we can drag a box around those and simply press S on the keyboard again. Now we've got all our smooth points, all we need to do is just edit the control points here, similarly to the way we did with the Bezier spans on the letter U. So again, we can actually just maneuver these round and we can create those nice tangential flowing curves by aligning this with the verticals and the horizontal points. It will automatically snap for me when I get to that. You'll notice that the symbol will change like so. And so I'll do that for all of them to start with. And then we can do as we did before and simply just jog them to where we see fit with the keyboard. So I'll just move all these around. Now that we've got our points aligned either horizontally or vertically, what we can do now is simply stretch out these using our keyboard so just simply select one and then either jog up or down this may seem quite a lot of work but The more effort you put in now, the better the finished product will be when you do come to running this on the machine. So it's definitely worth every ounce of effort we put in now.
as you can see it's coming together once we've aligned the points horizontally and vertically it if does we come want, together we may even quite nicely that we want to add, add some quite more points in there so what we can do is we can simply come over the line right click and add to insert a point I may even want to do that here as well so I can do that by simply going over the line and just pressing I on the keyboard as well and we can just add a bit more curve to our corners so that looks nicer there just helps the flow of the corners between the two main points there and there I'm going to go ahead and pause the video now I'm going to spend five or so minutes just tidying up and making tiny alterations to all my curves on the S uh, you can pause the video too and make the same alterations to yours so after spending a few minutes making tiny alterations to the curves on our S the next thing to do is to zoom out and see how it all looks so a shortcut to do that is by pressing F on the keyboard that will zoom to fit so what we're looking out for here is anywhere on our letters where we think that the curves may need adjusting now to me they look okay at the moment but one thing I will suggest is the fact that when you do have the image on in the background it can hinder actually your view so if we just go ahead and turn off our bitmap layer you'll see in actual fact that our U here does look like it does need quite a bit of improvement whereas before it may have looked okay so I suggest that we all have a go at this and just to make sure it looks okay when the actual image is turned off I'm just going to go ahead and just extend the points on here just so that the curve looks more natural and does flow a lot nicer and I think I'm happy with that now so once we're happy with the vectors we have created we can simply save our work and then we can then use that in conjunction with the toolpath companion video don't worry too much if you feel that yours hasn't turned out so well you can either obviously spend more time on it now before going on to the next toolpath in tutorial or you can use our pre-prepared file and use that with the companion tutorial.